And uh, I know it's not ideal to be reusing a straightened cylinder like this, but here's the thing. You gotta keep in mind that this is on a square baler. So we don't actually use the hydraulics all day. We only use them for about 30 seconds till something on the baler breaks and we have to go home. Oh man, seeing that thing back there is bringing back some less than pleasant memories. All right, so we got this thing in here. And um, so this tongue is designed to pivot. There's a pivot point like right back up under there somewhere. And right now it's in its folded transport position. This makes it approximately wide enough to comfortably fit on most roads. And uh, But the problem is you can see where the tractor tire is and our pickup, so it's gonna run over all of our hay and everything. So to use this thing, for those lucky enough to not know, you release that latch and then you pivot this entire thing over there and it locks into that hole there, thus swinging the pickup far out to the left of the tractor where it's easier to see and you're not running over your product. Uh, however, that's uh, that's you know how it works, but it's sort of a pain to do manually. It's a little bit time consuming. You have to like put a block under one wheel, and uh, so it's a it's an option. I don't know if New Holland ever op ever offered it, but the Deer Balers did. I'm pretty sure New Holland did as well, where you can have a hydraulic cylinder mounted here, uh, either from the factory or perhaps a dealer installed option. Mine obviously does not have that. So we're just gonna hack and beat on this thing until it does. All right, so this is what we got. This is the hydraulic cylinder that I picked up. This is Canada's finest, manufactured May 22nd of 2013. It's been sitting in some warehouse for a while. Uh, brings back good memories because that's when I was back in weldering school. We also got two hydraulic hoses with two um, coupler fittings for the back of either the uh, Kubota or the Zetter. They both take the same kind of coupler, which I really like. And so what we need to do is fabric cobble up some bracketry and um, we got to put a bracket that holds this end of the cylinder, bracket that holds that end of the cylinder. And these are some old tractor wrist pin bushings, um, you know, that go through a piston. And we're going to use these to make a bushing that will go in here on our bracket. <laughs> So this just in, wrist pin bushings are made from extremely hard steel. I actually was sort of afraid of that, but I decided we'll try anyway because it's free steel, right? It only cost me thousands of dollars for the engine rebuild, but other than that, it's free steel. And, um, and you know, it was, it was difficult to, uh, to drill through, but I used a good sharp drill bit with lots of oil, and I went really slow, probably only about 100 RPMs or so on the lathe. I never actually bothered to look at how fast that thing's turning, but if I had to guess, I'd say somewhere around 100 RPMs, so you can see we have two perfectly functional bushing things. broken junk with my other broken junk. You can see we got the cylinder test fitted and now oh, we gotta purge all these lines. Oh damn it! Oh we just bent that ramp. All 
All right, so I took the cylinder, I put it in the press, and I pressed it for the most part straightish. It's not perfect, but we all know the secret to farming is you gotta make sure your equipment's just as jacked up and completely dicked as humanly possible before the grass even starts to grow, for the most part. Uh, so we, we've done that. As you can see, I got this cylinder on here. I don't really like the bent. I will say it happened really, really fast. Uh, I, I guess I'm still not used to the hydraulic output of this machine because uh, I thought it was just like, you know, purging the lines of air or something. And I see stuff start <laughs> like that. So it turns out I had to come in here, just torch cut off another quarter inch uh, on that bracket. Really should have thought to test that out beforehand, but you know, hindsight's 2020, and now I know, which is good, because now I'm up there with all the people in the comments who probably knew since before childbirth. Anyway, uh, you know, I can't say I'm really all that, um, not really all that upset for a number of reasons. One, the cylinder only cost me like 120 bucks, including shipping to get out here. And two, as you can see, our tongue is still straight as an arrow. So this design, complete with scrap metal rebar and stick electrode use, actually seems pretty strong, and uh, we know that the cylinder will bend before the uh, before the tongue does famous last words. So I, I set this little chain thing up here. It holds this pin in the outwards position so it won't be locking itself into the, the holes there. And um, yeah, I mean, it kind of sucks that that happened, but hopefully there won't be too many issues. I don't actually even remember the last thing I broke like this on a project. I mean, I know it's happened, but it's been a while. So off the top of my head, I got nothing. And uh, I know it's not ideal to be reusing a straightened cylinder like this, but here's the thing. You got to keep in mind that this is on a square baler. So we don't actually use the hydraulics all day. We only use them for about 30 seconds till something on the baler breaks and we have to go home. Oh, that looks factory-ish. Grab our remote, put on my safety squints just in case. Yes! Oh, nope, it's grabbing again. Wow, that is one super bent cylinder. I think... <laughs> I think... I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, this thing's pretty dicked even now. But, uh, yeah, not my greatest moment, but you know what? The saying goes, if you ain't breaking stuff, you ain't making stuff. Alright, just had to mutilate and paint job some, and I think we have enough clearance on that thing to clear the thing. Oh, this is nice. It's gonna make the rage it comes with having to fix a square baler constantly and use one that much more nicer. Oh, yeah! All right, so that is my fear. Uh, it is a little bit short of rotating lock to lock. Uh, that I don't like. However, hindsight's kind of 20-20. This is a 12-inch stroke, I believe, cylinder. I probably would have tried to find a 14-inch if I had to do this again. But man, how about that? Pivot's so nice and smooth. Ready to hit the road, go back and fix this thing. Ready to use it for 30 seconds before something else breaks in a matter of seconds. Whoa! All right, hey, how about that? And I will say, that hydraulic cylinder still looks bent, I don't know, oh, <laughs> yeah, camera makes that show up more. So uh, I should probably cough up 120 bucks or something for a new one. But, hey, how about that? Square bailing in style. Hey, well, I guess now it's just a matter of uh, making it so the rest of the baler, well, I won't say works as good because you know bent ram and every well you know what if it worked as well as this though it'd still be a major improvement and uh more agriculturally related vlogs random projects and general rage coming soon thanks for watching i guess